So you want to know all about the periodic table? Well, you came to the right place. Hi, I'm Max, and I'm going to attempt to explain the periodic table. The periodic table is a 7 tall by 18 wide grid that contains all the elements known to mankind. It usually lists the atomic number, the atomic symbol, the mass, and sometimes the charge. They are arranged by atomic number with each element, going from left to right, top to bottom. The modern periodic table was originally created in 1869 by Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev. Of course, all the elements were not discovered by then, but the table's genius composition left holes for all the elements to be added in in the future. Nowadays, the table has 118 elements, 94 of which occur naturally, and the rest have been synthesized in a lab. In the way the elements are arranged, there are a few ways you can group them together. One way is to divide them into blocks. Each block represents elements that all have the same valence orbital. The left two columns are the S block, the next 10 columns are the D block and the last six columns are the P block. Between the S and D blocks is the F block. There is one exception to this rule, which is helium. It's technically supposed to be in the S block, but due to random reasons, it is in the 18th column. The elements can also be grouped into metals, metalloids, and non-metals. The higher up and to the right you go, the less metallic an element is. Each horizontal row is called a period. The lower down a period you go, the higher the atomic number and mass you get. So the elements become heavier and the atoms actually become smaller. Each column is called a group and usually these groups have similar or basically the same characteristics or properties. Uh, there's a few main ones. There's alkali metals. These are the metals that have one electron in the S block. They are all soft, shiny, and highly reactive with water. While hydrogen is in the same column, it's not technically considered an alkali because it's quirky. The second column from the left is the alkaline earth metals. Uh, these are shiny, white, silvery metals. They are also reactive, but they're not as reactive as the alkalis. Then you get the halogens. These are in the 17th column. When halogens react with metals, they produce salt. A common salt produced is sodium chloride, which is common table salt. Duh. The middle halogens, such as iodine and bromine, are typically used as disinfectants. Some halogens are actually used in halogen light bulbs together with noble gases. And finally, noble gases. Noble gases are actually my favorite group. This is where it gets interesting. This is the 18th group. These are the gases that are typically considered to be chemically inert because they have full valence shell. They are also odorless and colorless. These gases have very low boiling and melting points, making them great cryogenic refrigerants. Noble gases are also used for incandescent and halogen light bulbs since they don't react with much other stuff. They are also quite popular in neon lighting together with other colorants to produce vibrant bright light. And that's basically all the important information about the periodic table. Now you may be, now you may be wondering, how is the periodic table even relevant in everyday life? Well it actually is pretty relevant. It easily conveys the similarities of the elements and how they are interconnected. It also shows off the properties of different groups of elements such as their chemical reactivity or how they look like. Now why did I choose to present the periodic table? Well, one day I actually came across the Wikipedia page for the periodic table and I began reading and reading it and I just became so obsessed and emotionally invested in it and so I just decided to do it for my project. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe for more videos like this.